All right, so we're taking a look at fusion effects on the edit page. The cool thing with these is that all the effects are in an effect stack, so you can change the way in which that they're stacked on top of each other. And even cooler than that, each effect is in its own fusion comp. So they're not going to affect one another, as well as the video track or the video clip on the uh, timeline has its own fusion comp so that they're not destructive to one another. So you can completely composite something on the video clip itself, but then add effects layered on top of that that are all in their own fusion comps. Might be kind of lost explaining that, but I'll show you here in just a second. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Before we get started, for those who haven't seen my content before, I do have a website that's fully dedicated to everything DaVinci Resolve. You can go there and take a look at a ton of different tutorials I have, as well as pre-made assets. All right, so we're just going to throw in a clip here. And the first thing that you're going to see is now we have this whole new uh, way of looking at all the things that are active and the things that aren't active. In previous versions of DaVinci Resolve, unless you had uh, the ability to see the different parameters, those were the only things that were up here. Now you can kind of see all of them, which is really cool. You can also make these smaller so you can see uh, just the icons if you get used to that, or you could just do just labels. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it uh, with everything because that's what it is by default. But let's come jump over to the effects library and we'll go into effects. By default, there are a couple here that are uh, freely available with the installation of DaVinci Resolve. Obviously, uh, with time, there'll be a bunch on my website. Uh, these were actually introduced in DaVinci Resolve uh, 16 but uh, I don't think a lot of people understood how they worked. So even like myself, I didn't really take the time in creating them or going anything further, but they, uh, DaVinci Resolve 16 did have the ability to uh, bring these in to your project. So let's jump into how these actually work. Because I have a drone shot here, we'll just go in here and we'll get the drone overlay and drop that on. So dropping that on, obviously we have some stuff that was added. There's a bit of a tint here. Uh, if we zoom in, we can see that there is some type of noise and we have some type of like reticle going on here. Um, if we come now, we have the effects enabled here. And this is just like any type of fusion um, powered uh, tool. If it's in a transition or a title, we have the ability to edit a bunch of parameters that are made available here. Uh, but there's something really cool if you didn't see it here is we have here, we have the ability to change how the stack works. So we'll just add on something else on here. Let's add on night vision to the clip. And now we have the drone and then we have the overlay. And as you can see here, the uh, night vision is over top. And if we switch it, now we have the night vision behind. So the night vision is getting processed first and then we're processing the overlay for the drone. So that's where it quickly, you can switch how things are stacked uh, with this effect stack, which is really cool. The other thing that you'll see here is we have a fusion uh, little logo. So the little logo down here that fusion has, we have a button here to go into fusion. I'll quickly show you that. Uh, so if I click on this, depending on which one you're in, Let's actually jump over to the drone overlay because that's the one, let's say we want to edit that. We click on it. What it's going to do is that particular fusion comp we're going to jump into. Now, how I was explaining how they were stacked. So now we see everything that comes in here. That's all the stuff that is prior in the stack, right? So all the stuff is getting rendered first. And then because uh, the drone overlay is below that next, we're going to be taking a look at that drone overlay. So now we look at the drone overlay here. And if we open this up and zoom out just a little bit, now we can come into here and change any type of parameter. Now this really depends on the creator of the template, but now we have the ability to come in and change things to be very specific to our needs. We could use that as a starting point and we can always go back and use the settings. If I also, if I click on this, I still get those same settings here that I can edit. Um, now it's as simple as jumping back to the edit page and we're back here uh, working on this project again. If we wanted to come into night vision, we could come into the night vision one and we can start working on this. And as you can tell with this night vision one, 
uh, we're not seeing that drone overlay because this is the first thing in the stack that's getting processed. Uh, same thing here, you can open this up and then you could go into each node, you can learn how the uh, effect is built as well as you can go in and make very specific changes. If the uh, night vision uh, tool set that was made available isn't enough uh, customization for you can go in and edit this. Like I said, this is all really going to be dependent on the creator of the template, but uh, as you can see here, everything is open and freely available to customize. So if we come back over, after editing this video, I forgot there was one part that I haven't shown you guys, and that's the ability to move things around with the on-screen widgets from Fusion on the edit page. It's actually pretty cool, let me show you quick. So if I come over to uh, my project here and I, in my effects, if you have an effect that has the ability to have some type of on-screen control, you can go into it and come over here and then go into Fusion uh, Overlay. And as you can see down here, we have the center position target, and that would have a controller. You can see everything is green here. Let me turn that off so we can see it. So we can see our little controller here, and now we can move around that one element. Obviously, depending on how different effects are built will dictate what you have the ability to see and also change here. But I just wanted to show you that you do have the on-screen controls. This was something that I was actually hoping that was... Uh, uh, it was something that I was hoping that would be implemented in uh, the previous versions of DaVinci Resolve, but sadly it wasn't. But now we have the uh, ability to move those controls. So this, as you can tell, is a mask. Uh, and we can move it around as such, and we can move a corner down to change the size of it. This is the one caveat that I really didn't like about how uh, all of this was introduced. If I click on this, and now I go into Fusion without clicking on one of those buttons, what we can see is now we have the raw clip, and we can add on stuff onto here. Let's actually jump back. This is going to be another video talking about uh, these different uh, things that you have here that you can change. I have one for motion graphics. Like I said, check that video out uh, probably later this week. Uh, but we can come into here and now let's say we needed to composite in a car driving down the road or a bird flying you know, across the sky or a plane flying or whatever it is, we can add that in here and this will then look like it's a part of the video clip. So if I click on here and this is just to show you, let's say you know, this was a plane or whatever, I'm just going to add some text into here, but I think you'll get the idea here how this is all processed. Actually, let's change this up just a little bit uh, to be kind of a tint of something. So we can see that it is definitely processed. Um, so whatever we composite is processed, and then all of these different effects are processed on top of that. Uh, because these are like primary effects that would be processed on top of that. So, so there's all different fusion comps here that are working together to build out this video clip. And you could have someone that is a VFX artist that's doing very uh, in-depth compositing. They can do the whole composite, but then you can have the editor throw some type of little effect on top of it. Uh, that you might have got from a pre-made pack or that you know you guys made on site you now have the ability to simply go through change how things are processed change the order like i'm showing here and then go into uh, each comp and change the different parameters in those comps uh, the big thing that i was saying before um, if i come over to here there's nothing stating or really showing within the ui that this is the primary comp for this project, right? There's nothing really here showing that. Um, if I come back to the edit and then I click on one of these, we're going back into here and there's nothing that shows it. You know, this is just showing the video clip that you're working with. If I click on clips, I come down here, we can see that this is just a comp, right? And it shows all of the uh, stuff down there. But if I come into here, it's still showing the same thing. This is the one caveat that I, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I feel like something should be displayed on screen, just making you aware that you're in a effect or that you're on this page. Because I feel like by accident, if you walk away from your computer and you come back, that you could be in the wrong comp. Uh, maybe I'm just thinking outside the box and maybe it really won't become an issue, but uh, being able to, 
determine if you're in an effect, if you're working in an effect or if you're working on the main timeline. The one other caveat that I have here is there is no way to cache any effect. So if you're working with heavy effects currently, this could change by the time we get out of beta, but currently there is no way to cache fusion effects. Even though within um, the project, uh, there is a setting for caching fusion effects, but it's only caching uh, fusion effects or fusion comps that are tied directly to the uh, or the the clip that's on the timeline. So, like I was showing you the three different uh, comps that we were currently working with. If I come back here, there. So currently, there is no caching that is happening here. Uh, there's no way to cache these. If I come over into in here, it says that it would cache automatically cache if you're in the user mode. The user mode means that you have to manually say what is cached and what isn't cached. The easier way to go about that is just using the, um, in here, using the smart cache, and that would automatically cache those things. Uh, but there's no way of uh, like caching these things. Um, so maybe this is an oversight, but the only way to cache stuff and the only stuff that gets cached is if we go over to the normal project and let's say we add something on here that would need or that would then turn this into a fusion comp. So like I come over here and now we see the stars, that means that it's a fusion comp. And as you can see across the top, now it's going to cache, but it's only going to cache this initial thing. So once that's processed, that's cached, then it's going to run through our effects. Our effects, currently, there's no way to cache. So with that, there are a couple of drawbacks. Uh, if you end up adding a lot on there, as you can see, we're struggling here on the playback. Now, the stuff that's here, just the, 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 the uh, title, that's not going to be something that is going to be, that you're going to struggle with um, caching. But uh, just to show you, if I come into here and you can go to reset comp that's tied to this, that's just going to remove all the stuff that we added, which was only a title. Uh, so now we have no caching. And now if we play this back, obviously it's going to go into one, uh, render that comp, come out and render this comp. Currently there's no way to cache this. Um, unless I believe you might be able to go into each one of these and do a node-based cache. So I might be able to come into here I actually don't know. Um, and let's say we collapse this group and then come into here and cache the disk. So I, we might be able to do it this way. Obviously that's not ideal. Uh, the whole point of having these effects is to throw them on here, uh, quickly edit them and have them work with the project. But um, yeah, so doesn't seem like there's a way to cache these. I might be completely wrong on that. Like I said, uh, in here, there is the ability to automatically cache uh, fusion effects uh, in user mode. So I could simply come over to playback, go into user mode, and there is no bar that is automatically added here. What that means is that if we come over to fusion and then we add something in here, like I was saying, the uh, uh, that setting is if we're on uh, user mode, that it would automatically start to cache. And as we can see, it's added on there to start to cache this. Uh, and that's just because it's looking at the fusion comp that's connected to this one, um, to the clip that's on the timeline and not the effects. Because of that, that's then triggering the cache. But that cache will only be for this little comp. Once it's done with that, then it jumps to the effects uh, panel and it starts to cache that stack there or excuse me, it doesn't cache that stack, it starts to process that stack, and there's no way of caching that yet. So just wanted to make you aware of that. I feel like these, there's definitely gonna be a lot made. The caching thing will definitely get fixed in uh, a short period of time, I can guarantee you that. Um, and the effects are definitely going to be a thing that we are going to see more and more, and a lot more people creating them because um, there is a lot of possibilities there. There's a lot of cool ideas that, at least for me, that I already have here. Uh, one of the other things to let you know, this uh, if you click on these three dots, um, you can click on the preview with the hover, and that just means that once you're in here, 
you can hover over it and it'll show you uh, what this thing is and what it would look like being applied to your clip in its default state. Obviously, you can go in and change it up, but it just shows you the default state, what that would look like scrolling through your clip. So that's pretty much the uh, Fusion effects on the edit page. There isn't much more to add to it. I'm pretty happy with that addition to DaVinci Resolve. I think that there's definitely going to be a lot more that is uh, seen with that. There's probably going to be a couple more improvements until we're out of beta here, but uh, I'm definitely hopeful and I enjoy it. And I really like the addition to uh, over here, making everything a bit smaller, getting rid of all of that extra unnecessary space between things. I feel like it looks a lot cleaner. Yeah, overall, I feel like it's a nice addition to DaVinci Resolve. So that's pretty much all I have on Fusion Effects on the edit page. My name's JR. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah.